Hello, and thank you for joining me today. Um, I'm going to be opening up a, a collector's edition sample box for the Rise TCG card game created by Francois Vonarelli. Now, unfortunately, the Kickstarter has already concluded as well as the backer kit. Um, and I acquired this um, off the secondary market. This was provided to content creators um, to, gain, to uh, provide some exposure to the game. And uh, I hope to do that today as well. I know to some watching this, this may seem blasphemous, um, but uh, sometimes you just gotta break the seal, right? Now, I stumbled upon this game here on YouTube and I thought the artwork was absolutely gorgeous. I joined the community, the Discord, um, which I'll be sharing all the information for this game below in the video description. And looks here, looks like we have the box topper is uh, Myrtle. Uh, this is a summoner in the game of Rise. Um, you use this in conjunction with another summoner to uh, generate capacity points. You can kind of think of those like mana in Magic the Gathering. That's the primary resource generation for uh, for the game. We, we can go in more detail about that later. Well, here goes nothing. Now, the the game text on these cards has changed, um, some of them significantly since this printing. Um, that, that has since been updated for the English version of the cards. Again, that can be found in the links below. Um, they just concluded printing a sample set two, uh, which was the test uh, randomization distribution within the booster packs um, and to test some foiling options those have also been provided to content creators and should be swarming Instagram and YouTube soon now I know I'm pretty certain that the rare distribution in these packs really is kind of non-existent it's just wherever it was on the print sheet is how it appeared in the, uh, in, in the booster packs um, to some degree and correct me down in the comments if I'm wrong. Um, but here we'll go ahead and get started with pack number one. Here we have uh get this in shot. Uh Blast Factory Core Blast Core Factory. Uh this is an incantation. Rank two, which means you can have two of them in your deck. An incantation, you can kind of think of an incantation like an enchantment or a you know a a card that stays in play and provides some type of static effect or triggered ability. Um, here you can see that the basic effect next to the tilde it says the Blast Corporation factory generates a rank infinite clone creature when it arrives on the battlefield at the beginning of each cycle. And for two stock, you can generate a rank infinite clone. A cycle is like um, a turn cycle. So when this comes into play during your turn, at the beginning of your next turn, that's considered one cycle. So this card just basically churns out clones. We have Pomp Cat, which is a rank infinite creature. Um, generally, you don't put rank infinite creatures in your deck. You use other card effects to put them into play. Uh, this card has an ability uh, called Diversion. Um, basically you perform a test and if you're successful by flipping a coin uh, during your turn and before the combat phase you can target an opposing creature that creature can't defend this turn we have a uh, gremlin another rank infinite creature demon uh, it has flight some ability I don't recognize off the top of my head and the fire attribute you basically use this rank of the creature as a defender to um, take creatures from your opponent. I'm not going to go into detail for all these cards. Um, just the ones I'm fond of. Let's get this back into focus. The 
foiling on these cards is absolutely beautiful along with the artwork uh, the gameplay is very top notch um, there's an ongoing FAQ in the discord um, and a group of play testers helped um, refine the game text and provide clarification for the latest printing of the game um, again then that latest printing for sample 2 is pre-alpha and alpha is targeted to release sometime around May little uh, Miley Cyrus reference there I missed a card. Z Gunner. Moving on to the second pack. I'm a, I'm a scissors guy. I have a hard time opening up packs with either the pull tab or um, by pulling it open here. I generally don't want to risk damaging the cards. Here we have a summoner, a hermetic champion. You can use this summoner to fly through your deck pretty quickly and dump a bunch of cards into your cemetery or graveyard, apologies. Um, that can be combined with some other interesting effects from other cards to pull a bunch of cards out of your cemetery. Here we have ultra laser unicorn. Electronic brain. Get that into focus. Ooh. Now this. A lot of people regard this as one of the most beautiful cards in the set. Uh, this is a pristine level up. Now to earn more uh, capacity points from your summoners, they all started at level one. Yeah, we'll go ahead and grab uh, this summoner and talk about uh, some, a little, them in a little bit more detail. Uh, so... Yeah, here we have the Summoner Hermetic Champion that we saw earlier. Um, it has three skills. Um, a, le a level one skill, level two skill, level three skill. Um, the way you access these at the beginning of the game, each Summoner only has one capacity point and they're level one. So they can use one of their capacity points to activate any unlocked skills on their card. Um, but at the beginning of the game, as I said, you only have access to their level one you level them up by using level up cards during your turn. And this is a pristine level up. Um, the targeted summer gains one level. Um, this can be cast after you use the, your summoner. Um, normally you have to use the level up at the beginning of your turn after the restoration phase, which is like your untap phase. Um, this allows your summoner to gain a level, straighten, and they gain all their capacity points back and can you can invoke and use their abilities again um and you can see that this is a rank one card which means you can only have one copy of this card in your deck thus lance has flight and pierce and iron skin which means if they take damage and they don't die from it um, they gain a plus one plus one charge counter which would increase their um, attack and defense by one pierce is whenever they deal damage to an opposing creature um, any damage that exceeds their defense um, there your opponent has to assign to a summoner and flight is very kind of similar to other games the, the game's considered to have two planes like the ground plane Celestial Plane, um, and flying creatures can be blocked by creatures on the ground plane. We have the Skeleton King. Uh, this is one of my favorite cards. Um, he has Pierce. So he's immune to diseases. Um, and he has an ability called uh, Reanimate. Um, when he goes to the graveyard from play, uh, you flip a coin, and if you win that flip, 
Uh, he comes into play with a plus one, plus one charge counter. He's really good in a like an undead skeleton swarm deck because um, he basically bolsters all other skeleton creatures in play by giving them a plus one, plus one charge. And each time he attacks, he creates an infinite skeleton creature under your control. White Flame, Angel of Truth, Library Master, You also notice the back of the cards there. I believe it's embossed. There's a texturing. We have Dark Clover. Assassination. It's very very creepy looking <laughs> kind of welcoming not welcoming it's a hollow clone another summoner it's an interesting treatment on a card it's very cool it's a uh, It's another summoner right off the name, right off the top of my head. I cannot remember its name. Magic Seal. And my lighting might not be the most optimal. There are rarity symbols, but they don't seem to be showing up very well. I'll go over those later in the video. It's a pit, basically generates monster creatures. Compulsive Accumulator. Mazo. And Sado. They, you basically benefit from, each time one of your summoners or yeah, basically whenever an activation of an action under your control fails, one of your summoners recovers one hit point with Mazo and with Sado. Uh, you add one to your stock each time an action activated by one of your opponents ends in a fail. So basically, whenever you fail, you get to heal yourself for one. And whenever your opponent fails an action, you get to take... Uh, one of your you get to add one to your stock and if both of these are in play uh, they double the effects of each other and paranoia now this game is um, actively played on tabletop simulator with a fair portion of the discord community i'll also place links in the description below um, to videos on how to get that set up um, and to have and to build your own deck i'm sure there's always people in the discord looking to play games it's a very welcoming community very positive uh, and they like to say good morning a lot. Here we have favor. Support. Kind of offering a cantrip each time one of your creatures dies. Silence. Very powerful incantation.
Uh, this is a really strong equipment card. It allows your one of your summoners, the summoner that you equip this to, to um, perform an additional invocation by losing one hit point. Um, but then they're also going to suffer the pain from this equipment every round. This states with the, one of the basic effects. Equip summoner loses one hit point at the beginning of your turn while equipped with this ring. I believe we had cards stuck together there. Here we have deny. And we're back, folks. Uh, sorry about that. My The battery on my camera died uh, as soon as I revealed the hourglass. <laughs> I guess time ran out. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and continue. You see the hourglass has um, an ability. It's called Together. Uh, this means that you have to use one capacity point from each of your summoners um, to invoke this card. This is a pretty powerful rank one incantation. Again, it also has together. Um, allows you to spend a charge on it to activate the skill, one of the skills of your summoners if they have the level to use it. <laughs> this is a pretty interesting card. Uh, when you play it, you choose a rank, and while this incantation is in play, only cards of a rank that you chose can be summoned. And it leaves play once you draw a card. On to the next pack. Now, in this collector sample box, there is a box hit. Um, it's a gold collector card. It'll have a gold stamp signature uh, from the creator. Oh, I just got a little bit of a spoiler there. This is uh, one of the uh, called waifus of the set. This is Sloth. She's one of the seven sins. Um, if you manage to get all seven of these incantations in play, um, you immediately win the game. It's gluttony. Lust. Pride. Envy, greed, a dark temple. This is a really cool card. I have this in one of my decks on tabletop simulator. When you invoke it, you choose a rank eminent creature type. This temple gem generates a that car that creature of that type, and then at the beginning of each cycle, while it's in play. Helps reinforce your table presence. We have Showdown and Destructor. This is a pretty powerful card. It doesn't get rid of a lot of nuisance. Um, constant cards. But there's a risk with its uh, action. On success, you destroy a targeted constant card. And if you use an action that targets, um, you can only activate that action once per turn. Uh, that's very important. Um, that was one of the confusions when I started playing the game. Uh, you have to think about, um, you could use this during your turn and then their turn. Um, but as you can see, the, the failure with that, uh, all constant cards in play are destroyed, including the destroyer. 
I wonder if that's that's probably a typo. Is the card's called Destructor? And Key of Light. Oh yeah, there's a card type in the game called Doors. Um, there, they can block any number of creatures, and they generally have interesting um, come into play abilities or um, actions on those cards. And you can open those doors or close them, and then based on that state, they provide different game effects. On to the next pack. Casual browsing. Search for a rank three card of your choice and reveal it. Shuffle your library uh, for two stock, uh, which I did forget to mention. Um, there are two static cards that aren't considered constant cards. They're just part of gameplay. That's uh, called stock and ether. Um, you generate a number of stock at the beginning of your turn based on a choice of how many cards you want to draw as per the effect from stock. And for ether, um, whenever a rank infinite cre rank infinite card were to go into your graveyard, instead um, you generate you generate one ether. <clears throat> of those stock and ether uses resources throughout the game for various actions. Um, and here you see um, casual browsing is a rank three card that basically tutors for a rank three card of your choice. Reveal it, then shuffle your library. Um, the two stock cost here is the action to play this card directly from your hand. Uh, here's an instance of one of the cards who, the, whose wording changed after playtesting. Because a little, it was a little ambiguous as to whether it was to play the card that you, you searched for using this card from your hand, or if you played this card from your hand. Um, because, you know, capacity points are at a premium, um, and if you have a lot of stock, you maybe you want to save that capacity point to do something else with it, and you'd rather just pay the stock cost. But the wording was clarified so that you pay, you can pay that stock to play the card that you searched for using this card. We have protection mirror. Uh, this card was used against me on a tape TTS game where I, I played an imminent summon at the end of my opponent's turn and they decided to protection mirror and uh, take it from me. This cancels an imminent invocation regardless of what other types that card might be. And then it acts as though you summoned it, um, which can let you take um, a tempo from your opponent that they thought they may have had. And then for the cheap price of one stock in a coin toss, uh, on success, uh, the protection mirror returns to the top of your library for you to use again. It's madness. Abduction. Retrieve a targeted creature invocation from your graveyard and put it in your hand. Pay two stock. Play this card directly from your hand. That's an imminent. That can be a strong end of turn play or a surprise blocker. Felicity, collect a target inv incantation invocation from your graveyard and put it into your hand. Play this card directly from your hand. Pretty strong as well. Slime Slug, the devourer of constant cards. A huge slime came and engulfed a card at the cost of only two hit points to one of your summoners. Hecatomb. Basically a uh, one-sided wrath of God or you know, the whole board um, on a success all opposing creatures die which is a very strong effect but on a failure all creatures in play die life death it's all the same oh divine hunt it's a really good card search for a rank one card your choice in your library reveal it shuffle your, shuffle your library again this is another uh, tutor effect that searches over for a rank one card Rank one cards in the game tend to have pretty powerful effects and actions. Antimatter, 
all creatures in play die except spirit creatures. Um, there is a spirit creature type and a summoner that brings them in play. Um, this is a relatively strong card in that deck. And here's an example for three stock. All creatures in play die except spirit creatures. And then minus two charges of your ether. Antimatter returns to the top of your library. Here we have Resurrection Prophecy, an imminent rank one. This is a powerful uh, imminent card. It uh, returns one of your summoners back from the dead. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't mention that um, your summoners basically are, represent the avatars. They're, they generate the capacity point resources that you use throughout the game. Uh, they have hit points individually. And whenever you take damage, you assign hit points to one of your summoners and they lose that much health. Um, currently, as the rules are written, summoners can gain hit points up to 30. Um, and they all start at varying levels of hit, of hit points. Uh, and when, when they hit zero hit points, you flip them over flip them over and they've been killed. Uh, this resurrection prophecy uh, will bring one of them back to life with five hit points and their initial level, which means they're back to level one. This is rational. This is uh, one of two cards. One's irrational, one's irrational. Yeah. Okay, here we have Blast Corporation. Um, this card, when you play it as its basic effect, uh, duplicates all the clones present on your battlefield. Um, it also has an action on it. It's uh, kind of risky um, for one stock. The number next to that till day is the amount of stock you must pay, and that symbol is the coin toss symbol. I'll go ahead and zoom in on that. Um, creatures that you summon have uh, invocation sickness, so they can't attack the turn you summon them. Uh, when you, if you were to flip this, and it were to be successful, um, all of your clones are ready to fight, and they gain advantage during this turn. Advantage. Um, is an ability that allows you to kind of control when your opponent is defending with their creatures, um, how they defend those creatures. Uh, you basically have to choose how they block. And if you deal damage to a summoner, um, for each source of that damage that has advantage, you get to choose which summoner takes that damage. But you can see there in the fine print down there, that's not so uh, fail, all your clones die. So, Kind of a risky move but it could pay off in the long run here we have mimic uh, he has an ability that um, you can unlock it's a ball and chain um, if you successfully unlock it he's released from his chains and he gains a plus two plus two charge as well as bleed um, which was whenever he deals damage to a creature and it doesn't die uh, they get a negative one, negative one charge at the end of combat. It's a pretty decent card, Undead Army. Whenever one of your summoners gets hit, you get to generate a rank infinite skeleton under your control. And for a coin toss and a cost of one stock, as success, you can deal one damage point to targeted summoner. Here we have Grim Dance. It's uh, incantation rank one. Gives plus one plus one to all creatures of type zombie, skeleton, demon, and monster. And every two cycles, uh, send randomly chosen creature from your graveyard to your battlefield. That's pretty powerful. I've had that used against me as well. Z Dinner and Incantation, rank one. 
All of your creatures that have a horde ability gain a plus two, plus two charge as long as Z dinner is under your control. Now horde uh, means that that creature can block any number of creatures up to until it takes damage up to its defense value. And then also for minus one stock and a toss, uh, success, all the horde in game acquire the zombie type and so they gain in Hume. Uh, when this creature dies, you toss a coin. If it's successful, when this creature goes to the cemetery, it gives a plus one, plus one charge counter to a targeted creature under your control. If this creature is a zombie type, it gains plus two, plus two instead. And you activate that when it dies. Here we have Golden Clover. This comes in play. Two stock are added to your, two coins are added to your stock. As long as the Golden Clover is under your control, add an extra one stock to, or one coin to your stock at the beginning of your turn. And we have Common Rest. During this turn, straighten all your creatures after the attack phase. I should note that imminent cards, when played, uh, they generally stay in play till the end of turn, um, and then they're destroyed unless they're also of a card type that's constant, like an imminent incantation or an imminent creature. Um, those cards would stay in play. We have Echoes. who repeats the effect of the last imminent invocation played, you can change the target. It's a pretty nifty card. We only have three packs left. I wonder what the gold collector's card is going to be. We have Clone Morpher. I think this is the first example we've seen of the question mark type creature. Uh, basically, when it comes into play, it becomes the copy of a clone creature under your control. So this can become a copy of any clone type creature. And then for the cost of two of ether, you can change the form of the Clone Morpher to another of the same type. We have Felix the Destructor. Creature, cat, rank two, about the most swole cat I think I've ever seen. Um, it has reach, pierce, and fight back. And it's a three, two. Uh, reach means that it can block creatures with flying. And I believe also creatures that have distance. Uh, we've already discussed pierce. And fight back is if this creature is declared as a blocker, it will deal double its attack and damage back to the attacker, which is pretty strong. And there's just some clarification there that, yes, this creature is a cat, not a werewolf. We've got Unicorn Rider, Flight and Pierce. With an action to have Unicorn Rider grant flight and a plus two, plus two charge to a unicorn on your battlefield. Oh, Demonic Skull. Uh, this is a pretty awesome card. Uh, you definitely want to include this in a um, skeleton deck. Uh, one of those summoners, Lazarus. He's the one that brings those into play and he can generate, he can heal health points based on the number of um, skeletons you have in play. Um, this card is a definite uh, powerhouse in that deck. Uh, he has flight. Um, he has the the uh, reanimate. So when he dies, you do a, perform a coin toss, and if you if it's successful, he comes back into play with a plus one plus one charge counter, but then you can't use the reanimate again. So if he dies again, he would then just go into your cemetery. Uh, he gains plus one plus one charge for every skeleton creature in your possession, including those in your graveyard. Um, so he can become quite large, and if you have a way to give him pierce, he already has some type of evasion with flight. Um, he can be 
difficult for your opponent to deal with. That's uh, Fawaya. I think that's how you pronounce it. I may be wrong. Uh, but that's Flight. And that Halo ability. Let me look that up real quick. It's called Constancy. Um, she can't have negative one, negative one counters placed on her um, from any effect. A necromancer skeleton. Uh, he has flight and horde. He lets you uh, recur as a skeleton creature from your graveyard into your hand for the cost of um, two stock. And for one stock, you can transform three rank infinite skeletons into a rank infinite skeleton four four with horde. Um, so three measly one ones with reanimate can become a four four horde creature. Last smile, rank four. Quite a bit of uh, uncertainty here, but for the cost of one stock and a successful coin flip. Uh, randomly select a card in your graveyard. If that's a creature, it returns to your battlefield. If not, put it in your hand. We have Wanted. Puts a three stock bounty on target creature. And when it dies, you add that many stock um, to your supply. Icons of Destiny. It's a rank three imminent. Uh, it has multi-target, so as many times as you want to pay that cost, um, you can give targeted creature a one or more abilities that you can, you can select from the following. We have hard skin, rank infinite. Rank infinite knight creature with iron skin. When this creature defends, it gains a plus one, plus one charge. So if it makes it through combat and survives, it becomes stronger. Now it's the last card of that pack. We have Imitation. For a cost of two stock, you can repeat the result of the last activated action and you can change the target. So that's the last activated action period, either by you or your opponent. Mirror of Ugliness. This is where a creature just kind of punches itself. It's a good play during combat, especially if uh, you're tar they're targeting, if they put all their eggs in one basket and they have one large source of damage and you pretty much negate that. And again, with the cost of one stock and a coin toss, you can return it to the top of your library. We have the Golden Mirror. Eminent rank three. Cancel the target action activated by an opponent, and then use the action's results as if you owned it. Again, strong card. Mind control. You basically get to control how that creature behaves during your opponent's turn. Um, but you have to pay an upkeep cost of one stock at the beginning of each cycle. Treasure. Add three charges of ether and three coin to your stock. We have dynamite. It's an imminent rank two for one stock and a coin toss. On a success, you destroy targeted constant card. This also can replace a bomb if you have a creature with the explosive ability basically a creature that has explosive if during the attack phase if they have a bomb attached to them they can sacrifice themselves to destroy target opposing creature on the same plane so um, a creature with flight can destroy a creature um, with flight and a creature on the ground plane can destroy a creature on the ground plane here we have irrational which is the the card we talked about rational earlier so here you get to choose an opponent 
and then every other player must balance all of their card type cards for each type based on the number of cards in that player's battlefield. And then for each card destroyed during the balancing, the owner of that card draws one card for each card destroyed. And I believe rational uh, um, players that lose cards, they um, generate stock for each card destroyed uh, at the end. Imminent rank one, all summoners in play lose two hit points. And then for the cost of one stock and a toss, your summoners become immune to damage during this turn. And then another um, action on this card, coin toss and a cost of one stock. Success, opposing lumbers, summoners lose two hit points. And on a fail, your summoners lose two hit points. We have a barrio. Um, they have flight, constancy, and pierce. All abilities we've discussed. I believe this is a pretty strong card. Um, Angel, rank three. And again, the art. It's beautiful. And Protea, Protea form or Protea form. Um, this is an interesting creature. It allows you to copy an action on any of your creatures, doors, or incantations, eminence in play um, that you summon during the turn. Um, so basically, for example, if you bring this dynamite into play and you use its ability, since it targets a card, you can only use this action once. This would allow you to relaunch um, that action. Here we are down to the last pack. Irresistible Accumulation, the Reaper. Pretty strong card while there's still creatures in play. Has the action for one stock and a coin toss. You destroy a targeted creature, but if you fail, you have to sacrifice one of your own. And any creatures destroyed this way are replaced by a rank infinite skeleton creature. Oh, here's a door. Door to heaven. This door can only block flying creatures. Opening this door summons a rank infinite angel creature. So if you were to use the card we saw before, Key of Light, uh, we could use its action to open this door. And then that would summon a rank in for an angel creature. And then it has an action for two stock and a coin toss. If you succeed, as long as it's under your control, the door to heaven gives plus one, plus one to all your angels. And that is cumulative. We have a basic clone rank infinite creature. So this is the creature the hollow clone summons. We have Nocturne, rank infinite bat creature. You can use Lilith the Summoner to summon bat creatures. We have Alpha. If I'm willing to bet, the next card is Omega, and I was wrong. A lot of box op box openings I've seen on here. Um, generally, they're paired together. And it has an ability where. Um, it needs the copy of, um, of Omega into play. They're both rank one. Um, you can't attack unless the creature Ome Omega is in play under your control. Once Alpha and Omega are in play, uh, they merge into a single 10-10 creature, and you can give it two abilities of your choice. Um, right off bat, I do like Flight and Pierce, something like that, but that's just me. Well, basically, there's uh, another card that comes together, um, and there's Tyran. This is one of the summoners. Takes inspiration from the beholder type creature from Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. 
Do we have Domain of the Dead? Ash Clover. You can see here we have a little bit of gold peeking out from behind. So this is going to be the stamped gold collector card. Don't know what that's going to be yet. Oxo the cat owner. It's a pretty interesting card. <laughs> Lots of cats. Oxo the cat owner generates a rank infinite cat creature when he arrives on the battlefield in the beginning of each cycle. For a one stock and a successful coin toss, all cats under control gain a plus one plus one charge this turn. And his second action uh, for cost of one stock and a coin toss on success, generate a rank infinite cat creature. And because that action doesn't state a failure effect and it doesn't target, you can repeat that action as many times as you want. No limit. Oh, there he was. <laughs> a sneaky peek. So let me, let me get that out real quick and show you. I'll set this card face down. We don't want to get spoiled yet what that is. And I place the two side by side as best I can here. You see some of the card texture and foiling? That's Alpha and Omega. All right, and for the last card of the opening, ooh, it's Pride. One of the seven sins. Thank you for joining me on the opening of this Rise TCG Collector's Edition Sample Booster Box. In the next video for Rise, I'll discuss card rarity, examples of gameplay, and some fun combos. I have provided links to the Rise TCG Discord and the Rise TCG Guild channel here on YouTube. Head on over there to see some great tutorials on setting up Tabletop Simulator, creating your first deck, and gameplay tutorials. The Discord is a wonderful and welcoming community of players and collectors looking to discuss all facets and spread the word about this wonderful game. If you enjoyed your time here, please like, subscribe, and leave comments below about what you think about Rise TCG.